Hello everyone and welcome back to World of Warship Splits with Terry. Today we are looking at a relatively old premium ship and the reason we're doing that is because Wargaming recently has added the, I think they were called personal challenges. And yes, while we, well, while we all have our personal challenges, this particular one required... I think you had to play kind of like a mix of different ships and different tiers and uh, if you made it all the way through you got this. Because this is the Helena. A tier 7 premium US light cruiser. The Helena is actually rather famous. There are a lot of things I could talk about with the Helena. Uh, first of all, she was a Brooklyn class light cruiser and she was actually present at Pearl Harbor at the time when the Japanese were attacking. In fact, she was sitting in the in, at the pier where the USS Pennsylvania was supposed to be and uh, there was a minesweeper in front of her and when the Japanese pilots from the first wave came in, they actually mistook her, seeing the silhouette only, for the Pennsylvania and dropped a torpedo onto her, which uh, subsequently f flooded the engine room, uh, cut all the power to the guns, and um, only due to very quick reactions of the crew, could be contained. And then they got the diesel generators running and got onto the anti-aircraft guns, <laughs> because that thing has a decent amount of anti-aircraft guns, down from the dual-purpose 5-inch secondaries all the way to 50 cals. And uh, they used them to great effect. In fact, they used them so well that they shot down more than a fifth of the air total aircraft downed during the Pearl Harbor attack. And afterwards uh, went on to a long and somewhat illustrious career through the Pacific campaign, uh, only to, in the end, come to a bit, little bit of an unfortunate demise uh, at the hands of several Japanese destroyer torpedoes. That must have been missed, but the radar that the Helena was running uh, came in quite useful a couple of times. So we do have a rather famous ship on our hands, which means uh, let us take a look what the Helena can do, because uh, presume a couple of people, I think it wasn't super difficult, a couple of people actually might have her now. So uh, let's let's take a look. The obvious comparison will have to be against the Brooklyn, which is the other obvious Brooklyn class light cruiser in the game. I like the Brooklyn. Uh, the Dallas is blech. <laughs> Dallas is a hard, kind of a, a bit of a tough, a tough start to the, to, the, to the line, because she's the first ship in the split. The Brooklyn was fun in a sort of workhorsey kind of way. Um, not as much fun as the Cleveland, because the Cleveland has the absolutely terrifying for destroyers combination of sonar and radar. So you can't even torpedo the thing. Uh, the Brooklyn only gets the sonar. The Helena gets the radar. So we do have one less def AA, but we've got two radar ones uh, out, out, of the, uh, out of the box in return. It's a 7.2 kilometer range, so not the most long range radar, but it is a radar. In return, she does not get the sonar, which means that you do have to be a little bit more predictive with your torpedoes uh, to detection skills than otherwise, because you don't see them coming quite as early as you would in, say, the Brooklyn or the Cleveland for that matter. Other than that, uh, the hull is pretty much the same. Maneuverability is pretty comparable as well. The guns have a slight, the main guns have a slightly shorter range than on the Brooklyn, with only 10 kilometers. Uh, the secondaries uh, are different on the Helena, and they, while they have the same range, they don't do quite as much damage as the Brooklyn's, <laughs> which is a bit surprising, really. But it's it's pretty marginal in terms of differences. The AA. She has a slightly better large caliber AA, but is uh, somewhat more deficient in the small caliber. I would say overall, that's not a bad trade. I mean, you do have the def AA-1, yes, uh, which only gives you 75% of each. So they're not AA monsters quite yet, but uh, they're good light cruisers. They're maneuverable light cruisers that can really make use of their AA over time and shoot down quite a few airplanes. So concealment, uh, interestingly, is also not quite as good. So you could almost say it's a Black Brooklyn, because <laughs> the, the the ship stats are very very similar, with the main difference being that instead of the instead of the uh, the sonar you get the radar, and to be honest, um, I know that there's a bit of a discussion going on, but to be honest, I much prefer the uh, sister ships to 
taking the ship, uh, making it black and calling it black thing, <laughs> and then releasing it as a as a discount premium. So uh, I'm very happy with that. I'm not complaining that she's got she's very similar to the Brooklyn because uh, the Brooklyn's a good ship, and being similar to that as a sister ship makes a lot of sense. In terms of Elite bonus, you can either go for the AA specialization, which I wouldn't really do because the AA is not quite as murderous on these things. But uh, you get you still get some AA bonus on the escort, uh, plus you get more speed and you get main battery traverse, which is also quite nice. Uh, talking about the main battery, uh, she does suffer from the turret bug. Uh, it's the C turret here, the third from the front, which has a tendency because it it obviously is not super firing, so it has a tendency to swing the other way around if you are, if you are not, um, if you're pointing the ship straight forward, which is really annoying. But uh, well, maybe one day it'll be fixed. Uh, so in that regard, turret traverse is not a bad thing either. I have set the ship up for um, for reload. The the guns are great, and you've got lots of them. You've got 1550 millimeter main guns. That is a very decent amount, and uh, having a bit of better reload is a good thing at that as well. You, I don't see really see why you would go for a, a concealment build here with these things. I personally much prefer to go for full maneuverability because it is a light cruiser, and while the American light cruisers are pretty sturdy. She will take. She she doesn't take too well to large caliber battleship uh, battleship shells. In terms of camouflage, if you want to get the high uh, the uh, historical camouflage, you get hit points, range, AA range, and to the the <laughs> ubiquitous but absolutely useless torpedo damage reduction. At least on these kind of ships, like you know, nine point five four percent. Woo! <laughs> I can now take more torpedoes than before. Uh, anyway, so not a bad thing, especially the firing range, because she does start out with a lower range than the Brooklyn. And so if you've been grinding past the Brooklyn, going towards Seattle, Worcester, eventually, and you felt like a little nostalgic about it, and you're like, you know what, I would I really enjoyed the Brooklyn, and um, maybe I want the Brooklyn in tier 7. If you get this one, you basically got a radar Brooklyn, and it's a premium. So you can switch your, your commander from the Worcester down to this thing, and have an awful lot of fun. All right, uh, what else? Commander, yes, that's what we're talking about. Um, you probably do want to get the battlefield support for an additional air defense alert. Again, if you're having, if you're bringing a commander over from the tech tree line, he'll have that anyway because you get both sonar and AA defense, so it's an obvious skill to take. Uh, air defense expert is also an obvious one. You can take exploit weakness because you, while the guns don't have the greatest fire chance in the world for 150 mils, they will eventually get some fire set. Uh, you could also take the, um, well, you wouldn't take the recon, the recon skill if you were building specifically for the Helena, because she doesn't have sonar. But if you're bringing a captain from the uh, from the tech tree line, my is probably going to have the recon skill. So uh, just, you know, choices. You could also go for Daredevil for a m like slightly more aggressive play. Uh, I'm going with Survivalist here, but it's a, it's a, it's a valid choice as well. And there's not an awful lot of really useful, really useful skills going forward. I would probably take the ammo piercing cap shell because one thing that people tend to underestimate with these American 150s is the damage output that the AP can do, especially if you are fighting, uh, if you're fighting battleships and you you are at ranges where these where you can get these shells reliably on target, like you you know you're kiting away or. Um, you are at ranges where you can get reliable shots into balanced stern section. The AP is going to do a lot of damage. So that's probably what you would want with these things. Uh, the shells, the shell arcs, are the typical American light cruiser shell arcs. This takes some getting used to because they are very high and floaty. It has the downside that it's almost impossible to hit anything that actively maneuvers at ranges beyond six kilometers. It has the upside that you can shoot over pretty much every single island in the game and park your ship behind it. <laughs> so uh, th that's that's kind of the trade-off there. Uh, general rule of thumb: if you're if you're switching over from a different ship, if you think you give enough lead, give about fifty percent more lead, and then you're giving enough lead. 
Right, uh, anything else that we need to look at? I believe not so much. So, uh, given that this is pretty much a Radar Brooklyn, uh, let's get some. Let's get into some games. But like I said, she is actually pretty similar to the Brooklyn. So if you've already got a fully decked out Brooklyn and you don't really feel like needing this thing, sure thing. But if you if you don't and you enjoy this and you want to have a pretty good tier seven light cruiser that is nicely rounded and versatile, takes a bit of work, not quite as powerful as the Cleveland at tier eight, but a pretty good ship, then um, why not give this a try? In the first round, it is a 5v5 against a black Francesco Caracciolo, a Synop Algeria Black Dallas and the Sims. The Black Dallas is pretty good, that thing's got rapid reload, so gotta be careful with those. And we are playing Domination on Big Race. Now, just like the Brooklyn, uh, the Helena is a US light cruiser and is somewhat predestined to play the role of support cruiser which means you support your teammates by giving AA cover, by deterring destroyers, by, you know, setting fires to things if you have to. That said, uh, it doesn't mean that you have to always stay at the baseline. Because you're still in tier 7, and especially if you're in a top tier game, then uh, you, can ov you can and actually have to often play a little bit more more aggressively or versatile than than you would otherwise in higher tier games just because the meta tends to get a little messy in these games so we have a vesteros uh, that is heading over to a cap and a bot with us uh, so i am going to give the destroyer a little bit of uh, or at least i'm trying to give the destroyer a little bit of support but the bot decides that he wants to do bot things and does that. <laughs> so we <laughs> we are drifting. Okay, there's the enemy Sims. Now he hasn't seen me yet. Let's get a couple of shots off and uh, we might be able to do this undetected. Yes. So if he's smart he knows that he, he knows he knows that I'm here. There's also a bot Pensacola, not super afraid of that thing. I do have the armor piercing loaded. Again, uh, don't just stay on the high explosive. Armor piercing is good. Hello Mr. Sims. And we that was a little unfortunate, could have been better, but um, you can do that again very quickly. And now we obviously just need to dodge the inevitable Sims Torps. He's dodged the second. That's what I mean. Uh, you, you can dodge these floaty shells relatively easily. There come the torpedoes. And again, like I said here, the important skill is to know when and where torpedoes are coming because you don't have the sonar to tell you. And as you can see, she's perfectly capable of uh, citadelling a Pensacola with 150s from this range. Now, uh, Vestros has been drawn off and is, seems to be going after the Pensacola, which is a bold move because that is a heavy cruiser and, he, it, and she, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Uh, bots have magic torpedo dodging skills, so uh, I'm going to take on the Sims here. And again, I don't have uh, I don't have the the sonar, so I'll have to guess where his torpedoes are going to be, which is which is why I'm already stopping. But it looks like he hasn't actually dropped any torpedoes in my direction, and the Vestros is now finding himself in a close-up gunfight with the Sims and is now very dead. Fortunately, uh, there come some torpedoes. Not sure if these were Sims torps, but fortunately, uh, the Sims uh, mean. <laughs> In his efforts to kill uh, to kill the Vestrals, is now very close to me. He smokes up, which isn't going to give him, do him any good because I have radar, and this is where Brooklyn wouldn't quite be as useful, because the Brooklyn doesn't have. Now, what I don't have is the sonar, so I do again need to predict that the Sims probably has torpedoes ready. So um, yeah, that's a dead Sims. There might be torpedoes in the water, but the bigger problem is that there is a yep, there they come, that there is a Francesco Caracciolo over there. And he's firing semi armor piercing, which is a wise move actually, because this is a light cruiser. Although the armor piercing might be doing relatively well as well. Now we get a fire, and that and he insta damacons, but he should be about reloaded. So I'm going to try and time his reload, and uh, see if I can. Uh, he's definitely looking at me, but he's holding his fire. So this player is not, despite damage controlling a single fire, is not stupid. Uh, he's waiting for me to give him a little bit more broadside, which I am not inclined to do really. Uh, but uh, like this, because he shot one of my forward turrets off, I can only get... And yeah, as soon as I show a little bit of skirt, uh, he, he fires, but I've pre I have foreseen that and actually slowed down such that his salvo completely misses. And now I, I can uh, time his reload and set some permafires and just generally uh, turn, complete the full turn 
and get myself out of here and hopefully uh, there is there is something there's another cruiser of, of from our team at, uh, going going aggressive and yeah uh, that hurts but uh, could have been worse if I was full broadside there's a cruiser from our team go going aggressive maybe something that has torpedoes yep there come some torpedoes let's see if the Caracciolo has actually paid attention but it looks like he has and is turning around so He's only taking two torpedoes, not sure what that is. It's a, uh, it's a Nuremberg. Okay, so Nuremberg's got more torpedoes on the other side. Um, he would have had to go in more aggressively because uh, that's not going to be enough to kill the Caracciolo. And now the Nuremberg is probably dead. But I should be able to finish off the Caracciolo. I do have to be careful. There's a there's another there are another two cruisers straight up coming my way. And that is uh, the Black Dallas, but he is on no hit points. So let's get that thing killed, and then we've got a full health Algerie to deal with. We're down to half hit points, but uh, uh, Algerie is a heavy cruiser, but it doesn't mean that he's got good armor. So still the armor piercing is the weapon of choice here. We do, however, have to be careful there's a battleship over there as well. And obviously the Algerie has torpedoes, and I don't have a sonar. So once again, I do need to, uh, need to dodge the incoming battleship shells. Uh, I do need to dodge the carrier planes. Uh, and I do need to dodge the Algerie's torpedoes. Fortunately, it looks like Gial the Algerie is engaging the Alba there, rather than going after me, which is much appreciated. So, uh, yeah, these, these are the Algerie's torpedoes. Alba turns on a dime, but now the Algerie isn't paying attention, and uh, that Synop over there, however, is. So I really do need to get out of here. And there comes another drop from the Algerie. He was paying attention, but um, I'm, I'm now on full speed, so I'm just going to outrun these torpedoes. And then get the heck out of here because this is gonna get close. We are we're holding one cup, one uh, B cups contested, and we're a little bit ahead on points, but not an awful lot. So that Algerie needs to die, and I need to not die to the Sinop. Okay, that's the Algerie dead, and I'm down to 1600 hit points, uh, 200 <laughs> quick Damacon, and back to the high explosive. And unfortunately, I am not gonna go unspotted. Now we do have it's it's just the Sinop and the bot carrier. Uh, that said, uh, we are 100 points ahead. If that Alba goes down, uh, then, uh, and I, I go down, then the the Synop might be able to relatively easily pull that off. So it's just a matter of now dodging the Synop shots, uh, unloading some shells at the Independence, which uh, being a bot obviously does maneuvers like this. We. <laughs> so even at this range it can be relatively difficult to actually hit that thing with these shells. But uh, my bigger concern is uh, that I'm running away from the Synop. We've got 30 seconds left and we're 100 points ahead. Even though they're holding two capture circles, they're not going to catch up unless the Synop kills at least one of us. Now he might kill the Alba. Uh, and in, that's why I'm trying to do something about the independence there. But uh, I'm definitely a, a one-shot kill for the Synop, so I do have to get uh, I do have to get out of here and make myself scarce and make sure that uh, I put as much distance between myself and the Synop because uh, we are maintaining our points lead and even if he kills at this point we are still 100 points ahead even if he had killed uh, the Alba then it wouldn't have been enough because I survived and uh, that's what I mean with uh, occasionally you do have to be a little bit more aggressive <laughs> because uh, mid-tier games can get, can get messy like this especially if you are playing smaller teams and uh, yeah, do su do support do support your, and yeah, you can shoot down twenty one airplanes without too much trouble, uh, if if the carrier is focusing on you uh, throughout throughout the battle. The second game is a six v six with double Synop, Nagato, Fiji, Sims, and Mayhem. Again, I'm not super afraid of any of these. Uh, probably the biggest problems you have in in these light cruisers are heavy cruisers. So if you're up against, fortunately, there aren't an awful lot of good heavy cruisers at this tier. But if you're up against an American heavy cruiser like a Pensacola, that can be dangerous uh, if it's not a bot. Or say if you're bottom tier and there's like an Up Admiral Hippo or something like things that rapid uh, that rapid fire and uh, can exploit it, that you can't easily dodge. Anyway, back to the armor piercing because again, two destroyers out there, and we'll see where the team is going. Now, we do have a right flank to support. There is one of our destroyers going right by the looks of it. And oftentimes th that, yeah, it's a Jervis, oftentimes that uh, that right flank gets neglected and then somebody comes looping around from the, other, from the other side. 
So uh, just kind of strategically parking my... Oh, okay, it looks like the Jervis wants to go center. So we're not going to get any scouting on the right side, which means I'm definitely going to go there because the battleship is also disengaging, which means my team is completely abandoning the right flank. Probably because they've seen something on the other end of the map. And yeah, as we know, wouldn't we know it, there comes a battleship on that side. Now, I wouldn't be surprised if there was a destroyer coming around here as well, going for a sneaky cap or something like that. So... Um, I'm now alone on this right flank. The Jervis is probably unspotted, but I'm switching back to high explosive because there is the Nagato. Hello, Mr. Nagato. Now he is gonna sail behind an island, so we're gonna try and, uh, and set some fires. I'm detected. I was detected before I, sh before I was firing, so I don't think that was the Nagato. Uh, I think that might have been a destroyer. I know that there's two of them and we haven't spotted any of them yet, so I'm pretty sure there's a destroyer out here. Now I don't have sonar, so I do need to be a little careful. Okay, Nagato is uh, Nagato has has damage control to single fire. So now we're gonna try and get some perma fires. Obviously, now he comes off behind the island. Yep, there come the torpedoes. That's why I'm moving, because I I had a bit of a feeling there that there was a destroyer out there because I was spotted before I was firing at the Nagato. So uh, well done that destroyer for be for staying hidden. But we've now got a triple perma fire on the Nagato going, <laughs> and it can now merrily burn. And uh, we'll see. See if I, I think I've timed this a little bit late to accelerate because I think he, yeah he's he's already firing so turn 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 and that's okay a couple of hits but nothing nothing serious and uh, the Nagato is now going behind an island while he's merrily burning and there is the Mayhan as predicted I knew there was one of the little buggers coming around here so uh, I know where you are are you coming out of there. That is not a wise move. I mean, I don't have sonar, but I have radar. There he comes. Hello. <laughs> that is a very unwise move because I have 1550 millimeter main guns with the armor piercing loaded. And he smokes up, which means he's never seen a Helena before because the Helena does that. Now I just need to dodge between his uh, his torpedo shots that were pretty obvious when they were when they were launched. And he does not go back into con in, uh, back into the in, into concealment behind the island, but instead uh, puts himself into a flat uh, flat surface next to the next to the map border, which means that he has nowhere to go now. He's out of torpedoes, at least on that side. I think these things get torpedoes on the other side, but um, uh, yeah, that that that's a very dead man. <laughs> okay, let's reverse. He did get himself unspotted. My radar is on on cooldown, obviously. So let's reverse just in case there are some more torpedoes coming this way. Uh, point, point, point the stern towards the stern towards the enemy because I do want to have him respot. Yep, there come the torpedoes. That's what I mean with predicting where the torpedoes come. Now is he? No, he's not disengaging. He decided that he wants to commit suicide by light cruiser, and I'm more than happy to oblige. There you go. Good night. <laughs> Ah, <laughs> oh, he's got some more torpedoes away. That's why he was doing this. Okay, we might take one or two here. Uh, that'll be one. That's fine. We can take that. Uh, Nagato shots a little bit more difficult, but uh, the Nagato is now pretty alone over there. It's a far, it's long range, and I'm actively maneuvering, so he's not going to get an awful lot done. Uh, the destroyer is dead, which means the threat to the right flank has been eliminated. These guys would have been sailing completely uncontested around the right flank and would have been capping at this point with my team scattered around the countryside that's why <laughs> that's why i was here <laughs> and uh, so that nagato now has run out of has run out of his destroyer friends and is still sitting there giving me a nice broadside you can see you can really see the sea turret uh, going the wrong way around all the time because it's constantly out of alignment but uh, let's give a little, a little bit of fire support to the nagato now the nagato is reversing behind the island thinking probably that he is safe from incoming gunfire. Uh, that is not the case, because I am in an American light cruiser. The only thing that he's going to achieve is that I am safe from his gunfire, <laughs> but, yeah, I can't. but he is very much not safe from mine, so uh, he can no longer shoot at me now. All I can do, but I can do, is, is that. <laughs> I can still happily lob, lob shots acro across the island. And um, he has realized that now, <laughs> that he can no longer hit me and is going forward again. So I'm just going to move ahead and try to keep the island between myself and him because I've also got two battleships coming in and there's nothing else to clean up back here. Uh, could have could have gone for the armor piercing at this point because at this range I can totally do that. But um, uh, it's just adding insult to injury at, <laughs> at this point. <laughs> so he's dead. It's... Uh, Oh, there was one salvo difference. So I would say we have, well, it's not much left. We have relatively, relatively, 
relatively cleanly ruffle stomped the enemy team. But this might have ended very differently if not for the uh, uh, if, if not for keeping that Mayan in check early on in the game. So uh, Helena, uh, yes, it's a it's a radar Brooklyn, and that's a good thing. Uh, you could say, well. Why would I want this if I can already get the Brooklyn? Well, it's not that the Brooklyn is uh, isn't a good ship. She is, and if you don't want to, but the thing is, you get you can get the Helena for free if you complete the if you complete the challenges, which is a fun thing to do. I have no idea how how possible or impossible that is, but um, it's a good ship, and uh, having a radar at tier seven is is a pretty nice addition to things as well. It, it's not a Belfast, but um, it's a, it's a fun ship for random games, definitely. The a AA can make itself useful, and uh, you do need you do need a little bit more a little bit more skill in predicting torpedoes if you're engaging enemy destroyers uh, because of the absence of because the absence of uh, of sonar. But uh, in return, you get the radar, which can be devastating <laughs> against destroyers that don't expect to be uh, to, to be radar because they haven't really been exposed to radar quite a, quite yet at this tier, and uh, that gives her a, a very nice edge indeed. So good ship that. Um, uh, it's a it's something I enjoy. I enjoy playing, and uh, I think giving that away as reward for uh, for an event is is a good move. Anyway, that's it for me today. Thanks, everybody, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.